Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to be doing my April wrap up. So as always, if you haven't seen my first uh, mid-month wrap up, you should watch that first. Um, I wrapped up the 17 books that I read in the first half of April in that video. So this one is going to be my statistics for the month and the rest of the books that I read during the month. April was a weird reading month for me. It wasn't... I read a lot of books, um, but I mood read like a ton more than I usually do. Like my brain like would not let me leave reverse harem books. <laughs> I kept reading reverse harem books, which is like not something... I had read like maybe one or two reverse harems before this month and now I think I've read six or seven series of reverse harem books this month so it was a really strange brain space to be in um but I did find some ones that I really really enjoyed so that was great however if when I look at my statistics and everything my ratings for this month were a little lower than they have been like average rating has been lower was lower this month than it has been in the previous months so it was a weird month is the uh census that I've got from that um so I am going to start with statistics um and then I will get into the books so I ended up reading 36 books in April which like I said is a lot. Um, I am very happy with the amount of books that I read. I did read mostly audiobooks this month. I read 31 audiobooks and only 5 ebooks. Um, I was having a really really hard time in the first half of the month with ebooks. I my neurological my brain just was not focusing on anything other than an audiobook. Um, so I did, was limited to audiobooks. So there were a couple of books that I really, really wanted to read this month that I wasn't able to because they don't have an audiobook. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing, but I would rather not read that book than to send myself into a five day migraine spree. Um, <laughs> so of those 36 books I ended up having 13,211 pages and 321 hours of audiobooks. I only read six new authors which was a little bit less than I would have liked this month. Um, I had been reading pretty well um, in the last couple of months with new authors and having some a lot of new author new to me authors but this month I was <laughs> I read a lot of series so like the first book in the series is the new author and then the six books after that aren't so that's what happened a lot this month. I had one reread. Um, 20 of the books that I read were books that I owned. Um, 10 were from subscription services and most of those that sub most of those were from AnyPlay um, and then I had of the five ebooks that I read those were all from Kindle Unlimited and then six were audiobooks from the library. Um, I read 16 paranormal romances this month. It was a lot of paranormal romances and then as for other genres I had a really hard time this month categorizing what genre some of the books were. Do somebody let me know in the comments is Omegaverse contemporary? Because it's not like it's they don't shift. They don't like change form but it's Omegaverse so is it paranormal? Is it contemporary? Somebody let me know because I had no idea how to like fit those, categorize those so my other categories are kind of wonky um, but mostly the categories that I had were contemporary, dark romance, and um paranormal and majority were from paranormal so just let me know down in the comments below what Omegaverse should be under. <laughs> First star ratings I only had six five star books and one of those was a reread so I only had five new five star books which is so disappointing. Um, I really was like looking for one that I would absolutely love but I only had only had five. Um, I had two 4.5 star, 16 4 star, 
four 3.5 star, five three stars, and three two stars. It was a rough ratings this month and that led me to an average of 3.8 which again like I said is lower than it has been on average recently. That's it for statistics. I after I do my uh, after I go through the books that I read in the second half I will do my favorites and least favorites books <laughs> that I read this month. Um, but before I do that, let's talk about all of the books that I read. So the first two books that I read in the second half of the month are actually ones that I have a difficult time talking about because they are book two and three in a reverse harem paranormal series. Um, and I read book one and discussed book one in the first in my mid month wrap up. So I can't really say much about book two and three because they do they must be read in order they end on cliffhangers. Um, and that's the Emerald Lake series by Britt Andrews. Um, I read book one, like I said, in my the first half of the month. So that's my mid month wrap up. Um, but book two and three were the first two books that I read in the second half of the month. And I will say that I did lose interest. I didn't continue after book three in the series. I th think that I will eventually attempt to go back and finish the series, but it wasn't like gripping me anymore. Not like some of the other reverse harem series that I've read where I'm like, oh my god, I need to know what happens next. This one was just one that I lost interest in and you, um, the audiobooks are only available on Audible. They're not on uh, any play or at the library. So I was buying them and I just wasn't into buying them anymore. <laughs> then after that, I read the entire Kit Davenport series by Tate James. Um, this series is a reverse harem series with I think six men um, and one woman. Um, the woman is named Kit Davenport. She is um, going to this prestigious uh, boarding school. She was a foster kid um, and an orphan and um, this very rich man uh, adopted her when she was a like early teenager and sent her to this boarding school um, and she also is like a secret thief. She is um, known as the fox I think is what they called her and she basically like breaks into places and steals high valued objects. Um, and the book starts when she steals this object, she brings it back to the school and she finds out that there was actually a tracking device in it and a bunch of agents show up looking to try and find who the fox is. Um, and those agents that show up are her harem, I guess. Um, uh, each of the guys also has a um they there's there's a paranormal element to this uh series where the heroine finds out that she is like the last one of this lost race of magical creatures and each of the six guys in her harem all are um some form of magical creature whether it be a shifter or a mage or a I can't even remember what the other ones are but they um, have to save the world from this evil person who's trying to steal magic. It's very interesting. Or it was in the beginning and then I completely was like, it like went downhill. It was not, I really, really enjoyed the first like three or four books. Um, and then the last couple, it was just, it got too intricate. There was too much going on. It was not explained well enough. And I didn't really care about their relationship anymore. Like it just was too many, too much going on. I didn't care. I, so the last two books, I, I was just like trying to finish the series because I was like, oh my God, I need to finish them. Um, then after that I read uh, the first two books in another Paranormal Reverse Harem series and I don't know what the series is called. 
think it's called the Dark Side series. The first book is called Four Psychos and I loved this one. I loved book one and I really really enjoyed book two also. Um, and then I ended up getting halfway through book three and I haven't finished it and I like put it down and read other things. I'm not marking that as a DNF but I because I do plan to go back to it eventually but book one and two are amazing and book three is kind of slow which sucked. Um, but this one is about a girl who is basically like a ghost. She um, lives in this house and is tethered basically to this these group of four men who are all um who all live in this house and she is a ghost she has no physical form she has no physical body but she can see them and she can um like go places with them but they don't know that she exists until one day um the and she has been a ghost and like watching them for like five years like a really long time um and she one day a person come breaks into the house while all the guys are sleeping um and she is able to attack that person and is able to defend the men um and she is ends up getting a not a physical body but a uh the ability that the men can now see her and they are understandably confused suspicious of her um because they have like gaps in their memory they don't know where they came from they don't know um who they are like they have names and they know like they have like certain memories but there are like secrets to them about their past that they're trying to figure out and so they become suspicious of her because they're like she showed up at a very opportunistic moment um and so they five of them have to like work out all these serious secrets and everything the um, heroine cannot remember who she is. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know why she's a ghost. She doesn't know anything about her past. But this book is so interesting. It is absolutely hilarious. The heroine is so funny. She um, had been a ghost watching these guys for five years and all the guys um, only have sex with like the same woman they all at the same time and she's been like watching them and she has favorites um and is like talking about which one is her favorite and so when she can find they can finally hear her she's really excited and she's like oh my gosh we need to get me a physical body so that I can have sex with all of you and all of them are like what the fuck <laughs> but she is hilarious she's so sassy I really 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 liked her as a heroine and she was part of the re most of the reason why I loved this book um then after that I did my one reread for the month and that was Alpha and His King by Kiki Clark. This is the first book in the Kincaid Back series. I love this book. I've talked about it a lot on my channel. I love this series and I did a reread of this because book four in the series was coming out on audiobook and I really was waiting for it to come out um and I read this as a reread in preparation for that one um but this is an mm paranormal book and i love it then i read lilac by bb reed this one was a book that i thought that i was going to love it was one of those ones where i was just like i think i was so sure that i was going to love this book I didn't. I was wrong. I gave it two stars. I hated this book. I didn't like anything about it. Um, the heroine, so what this book is, is it is a reverse harem contemporary romance um, about a girl named Braxton who um, gets the opportunity to join this very famous band. 
um, this very famous band has three guys who were best friends, um, and then they had a fourth member of their band, um, and he died of a drug overdose. And their label, against their wish and their will, um, at, invites this woman to be the new guitarist for their band. Um, and they are not happy about it. Um, and so she goes on tour with them and um, she ends up having a relationship with all three of them as a reverse harem. Um, but I did not like any of the men. I didn't like the heroine at all. Um, she would talk about like internally in her like internal monologue would talk about how strong she is and how she wasn't gonna like um take any shit from the guys and then they would walk towards her and like stand close to her and she would be like but they're so pretty and like melt into a puddle and not stand up for herself and they were so mean to her and I don't feel like they like I just didn't want them to be together I didn't want them to be together I thought their like drama and like bickering and fighting was very like childish um the heroine has like synesthesia where she like tastes and smells things when she feels different emotions and that was never really explained so in like these scenes um she'll talk about how she like tastes things or smells things but the guys don't know and they never bring it up and it was just very weird and confusing and I just didn't care I will say I was gonna DNF this but I kept going I wish I had DNF'd it but I did uh, skim quite a bit in the towards the end where I was like almost there I was like I'm almost done and I did skim um, but I did not like this book <laughs> Then after that, I read The Hunter and His Mates, which was the book four in the Kincaid Pack series that I was excited that was coming out on audio. Um, this is a MMM romance, and it was, I've only ever read one other, I think, MMM book, and they're interesting because <laughs> they, you really have to make me believe the relationship between all three of them, which is hard to do in one book. Um, so I did enjoy this, but it was my least favorite of the Kincaid pack series so far. I thought that they spent a little bit more time on the overall plot of the series rather than on the relationship. And this relationship was the one that needed more time spent on it because there are three men. And the other books have the this plot underneath and that's like you're like following the plot of the of the whole series but the main focus in those books was on the romance and in this one it felt like the plot took a little bit more of a front seat where the romance was kind of more like in the back and I wanted there to be more about the romance and the development of the romance and the actual like working through everything it felt like everything fell into place very easily and that there was very little deciding which um didn't really work for me with the way that this relationship had been set up in the previous book because one of the character one of the men um one of the heroes he has a uh, PTSD and I just didn't feel like it was that dealt with um, because they talk about how he like oh he, the two the other two men are getting together and I believed the other two men's relationship and I just didn't feel um, this the third guy in the relationship so I gave it four stars I did enjoy it um, but it is definitely my least favorite so far in the series. Then after that I read Bad Alpha by Catherine Moon. This is a Omegaverse reverse harem and this one is in the same series as Baby and the Late Night Howlers and Lola and the Millionaires. I still haven't read Lola and the Millionaires. I really need to. Um, 
but this one was very interesting because this one had a female alpha and a male omega which is something I've never read before um so I was really um excited about that and I think it was done really well this one is about a woman named Eve who is a female alpha and she's also a assassin um, and she is sent to kill this beta named Adam. But when she gets there, she finds out that the person that she's supposed to kill is actually a male Omega and not a beta. And she doesn't want to kill this Omega. Um, and the uh, Omega's name is Adam and he ends up sort of seducing Eve and convincing her to bond with him. Um, while he is like sort of in the start of his heat and uh, <laughs> they end up bonding and are locked together and Eve is has to deal with this because she didn't really want she didn't want to be bonded um, and the hero the Adam he didn't really want to be bonded either but he was like to save my life this is what I'm gonna do um, and so then they're kind of stuck together and they have to figure out how to work together now that they're bonded um, and now that they're both on the run from the people who were sent to kill Adam. Um, and Eve is like, I need to find him a pack. She decides she's gonna like take care of him and she's like, I'm gonna find him a pack and then I can ditch. And she ends up finding these three guys um, who are in a pack who need an Omega and convincing them to like Adam basically she's like places everyone in the same in the right places so that what she wants will happen um and it's so interesting I really liked it um I loved the fact that uh, the three alpha men that she makes of this pack two of them are interested only in her so it's alphas with alphas which I thought was a cool dynamic because the heroine was the one who was like the Pax alpha she was in charge of the other alphas which was really really badass and really like cool to see the female be the like super dominant one I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars then after that I read The Long Game by Rachel Reed this is book two to um, Heated Rivalry, which is one of my favorite MM hockey romances ever. Um, it is originally a rivals to lovers, enemies to lovers, um, that takes place over years. It is so, it's very drawn out in Heated Rivalry. It takes place over years and Heated Rivalry ends on a happy for now and I always just sort of assumed that that was going to be the end of it um until a couple of months ago when I found out that Rachel Reed was writing this book which is The Long Game which is the follow-up book to Heated Rivalry giving uh Shane and Ilya their actual HEA because at the end of Heated Rivalry um they are together but they don't they haven't come out they are secretly together um and this book follows them at, in their relationship while they're still secret um and they have to deal with when are they going to come out are they going to come out are they going to keep it a secret who are they going to tell um worrying about what's going to happen when they do come out um, trying to see each other because they're both on different teams and during hockey season they are far apart from each other um, and making their long distance secret relationship work. Um, I absolutely adore the two of them. I love how their relationship develops. I love what Rachel Reed did with this book and put me right back into the feels of Ilya and Shane. Oh my gosh, I absolutely adore this romance. I adore the two characters. It is so amazing. I loved it so much. It was just what I needed for them to be like officially <laughs> happy and I loved it. It was so good. Mm -hmm. I gave Long Game five stars if you didn't get that from my gushing. Um, 
After that, I read Heat Haven by Sarah Blue, I think is the, who wrote this book. Um, and this one is a novella. It's like 100 pages, I think. And it is an Omegaverse where a woman goes to this place called Heat Haven, which is basically like this haven for Omegas where it's a safe space for them to go through heat. Um, and they are able to choose the alphas that they want to participate. They're able to have a moderator who sort of watches and makes sure that everyone is following their hard limits and that they are following the rules of the um, facility. And they, uh, this one follows the heroine who is an Omega about to go into heat, who is going to Heat Haven to sign up. Um, or to like check in um, before her heat starts and she gets into the elevator with this alpha who has recently decided to sign up for Heat Haven to be an alpha um, who helps Omegas through their heats um, and the two of them get stuck in an elevator together um, and end up in a uh, ro romance where they um, the alpha helps her go through her heat um, with one other male alpha who are there and they all form a relationship together. Um, I gave this 3.5 stars. I liked how to the relationship between the heroine and the alpha whose name I think was Griffin maybe? who um what got stuck in the elevator with her i liked their relationship and i thought that one was developed but the other alpha the other male alpha dion you don't meet him until she goes into heat which is so you only actually like see him for a quarter of the book um which i thought was a little bit strange um so i gave this book 3.5 stars i did enjoy it um but i would have liked a little bit more then after that I read The Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate by Kate C. Wells and I loved this. I gave this book five stars. This is a paranormal romance about a uh, woman named Una who is a werewolf shifter and she has uh, lives in this pack and the um, she ha uh, has never gone into heat. She has never shifted. In this pack like only you the women only shift when they go into heat and she's never gone into sh heat and she is a lot older than other women um and so she um she also is sort of like looked down upon in the pack because she has an injured leg um her leg she was in she was attacked when she was younger and her leg is kind of like mangled and she has a limp when she walks and she is just looked at as sort of like defective I think is the word that they use um and she is not treated very nicely in this pack um neither nor are like most of the women um and the alpha who runs the pack, his name is Killian, and he's this like tyrant alpha who is only focused on like the men and them fighting and um, he rules with this like iron fist. Um, and he, uh, one day the heroine is not feeling great while she's working and she declares that the alpha, Killian, is her mate um, and he fully rejects her. Um, and then he ends up realizing that, oh shit, she was right, she is actually my mate, and then has to spend the rest of the time basically groveling and trying to get her back. Um, and she is like not having it for a lot of it, and it's really, really great to see her really put him in his place and him start to realize that this iron fist that he's been ruling with doesn't go well, across well so great. He like thought his pack was so great and about how much better it was than what his dad's pack was because his dad was like really evil um, and he's like it's so much better and we treat everyone so much nicer and then she basically like slaps him in the face with all the things that are wrong in his pack that he was sort of blind to um, and everyone looked down on her and she is actually like incredibly smart, incredibly t 
tough and just so such such a good female character I really really liked her um and they have to work through their issues and he has to try and convince her to take him back basically um I really really liked this I gave it five stars it was so well done and I am excited to read more from Casey Wells because this was actually my first book by her then we are down to the last book that I read. The last book that I read in the month of April was Omega's Obsession. This is book two actually to Heat Haven and this one I liked so much better than Heat Haven. I gave this one four stars. It was done so much better than Heat Haven was and I think it was done that way. Um, it was better because it was longer. It was much more developed. You actually got relationships with all of the men. There were three men in this one and the heroine who's the Omega and you had full developed relationships between all of them which I really liked. Um, this one also was uh, like Swords Cross I think is what Katie Robert calls it. Um, where the men are also in a relationship which I really enjoy in my Omegaverse romances um and I really like this one it was the Omega the heroine who um she has always had this like crazy crush on her brother's best friend and he sort of like doesn't give her the time of day and she still goes after him and keeps trying to like get with him um and he she finds out that by snooping in his bedroom she finds out that he and his trial pack are signing up for heat haven and so she goes on the exact same day and um and goes to heat haven to try and meet alphas there to uh, get her through her heat and she meets the rest of his pack and she has relationships with all of them and it's really good. I really enjoyed it um, and I would recommend it even more than um, Heat Haven. I liked it a lot better than Heat Haven. Uh, but that is it. That's all the books that I read in the month of April. Let's talk favorites and least favorites. My favorites from the month were definitely Long, the Long Game by Rachel Reed. I just absolutely adored this. I am so so glad that she continued Shade and Ilya's story. Um, the Tyrant Alpha's Rejected Mate was another favorite of mine and then I think the third one that I'm going to say is Four Psychos book one in the Dark Side series. Um, and then my least favorites from the month were The Grumpy Player Next Door by uh, Pippa Grant, which I read in the first half of the month. Um, this is Wild by Matasha Madison, which I also read in the first half of the month. And Lilac by B.B. Reed, which I should have DNF'd. <laughs> um, but that is going to be it for this video. Please let me know down in the comments below what your favorite book from the month was. So please subscribe so you can see more content from me and I hope you have a great day. Bye.